So in, in taking a look at this, uh, Elder Jeffrey R. Holland had really just some, some fantastic things to say. It was, a, it was in, in, a, in a, a conference to celebrate the, the discovery of chiasms. And we'll, we're going to discuss that in later episodes. But, uh, but this is actually what he said. he said. He said, the presiding officers of the church appreciate and applaud the exceptional work being done by so many to search and to substantiate, to defend and promulgate the history and doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, including and especially the Book of Mormon in ways both scholarly and spiritual. He said some of the agencies, departments, institutes, and scholars doing such work are integral to BYU. But then he also said there are other groups and like-minded colleagues who are not part of the university per se, but may be nearby or spread out throughout the church or around the church. It says our heartfelt thanks go to all of you wherever you are. He said it should be noted that truly rock-ribbed faith and uncompromised convictions comes with its most complete power when it engages our head as well as our heart. To Oliver Cowdery specifically, the Lord said, I will tell you in your mind and in your heart by the Holy Ghost, behold, this is the spirit of revelation. And that, uh, he then goes to define that. He says that definition makes it clear that truth born by the Holy Spirit comes with, in effect, two manifestations, two witnesses, if you will, the force of facts as well as the force of feelings. And that is such an important aspect of this. Peter assumed that twofold aspect of our conviction when he said, Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. Such a beautiful statement here by 1 Peter. We should have and be prepared and ready to offer answers to people when they have questions, especially as it relates to the, the cornerstone of our religion, the Book of Mormon. In making our case for the restored gospel of Jesus Christ, I believe that God intends us to find and use the evidence He's given. Reasons, if you will, which affirm the truthfulness of His work. In fact, here in Helaman chapter 5, verses 49 and 50, it says that the more part of the Lamanites were convinced of them. Why? Because of the greatness of the evidences which they had received. So these evidences are a critical part of conversion. President Holland actually gave another, uh, another example of when, when Christ um, resurrected from the tomb, he showed himself to Mary and also to Peter. Mary and Peter then went and they told the other disciples, he's risen, he's no longer in the tomb. He did uh, like, he, like he prophesied he was going to. And unfortunately, his disciples didn't believe the messengers that he'd sent. So in this particular case, Elder Holland goes on to say, he says, the message is that if members of the Godhead go to the trouble of providing, quote, many infallible proofs, unquote, of truth, then surely we are honor bound to affirm and declare that truth and men may be upbraided if we do not. So um, that is the first time I've ever heard an apostle say that we may be actually chastised or upbraided if we are not looking for many infallible proofs of truth. And that's what we are uh, endeavoring to do in these podcasts. This is one of the most uh, succinct statements I think I've ever seen about this, uh, in, this, in this vein here. It says, our testimonies aren't dependent on evidence. We still need that spiritual confirmation in the heart of which we've spoken. But not to seek for and not to acknowledge intellectual, documentable support for our belief when it's available is to needlessly limit an otherwise incomparably strong theological position and deny us a unique persuasive vocabulary in the latter-day arena of religious investigation and sectarian debate. Absolutely beautiful words. Um, he then, there's a uh, Austin Farr, um, he said this, he said, though argument does not create conviction, lack of it, a lack of argument, destroys belief. What seems to be proved may not be embraced, but what no one shows the ability to defend is quickly abandoned. Rational argument does not create belief, but it maintains a climate in which belief may flourish. Helaman chapter 8 verse 24 says, And now ye know these things and cannot deny them, 
because of the many evidences which ye have received. Yea, even ye have received all things, both things in heaven and all things which are in the earth, as a witness that they are true. One of my very favorite statements of Joseph Smith, after, after the, the first vision account, is that he, uh, I, I, in fact, I've asked um, audiences all over the, 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 the world, actually, this question. Which is greater, faith or knowledge? And most, most members of the church will actually say that faith is greater than knowledge until I remind them of that early spring morning back in 1820 when a young man entered a grove of trees in New York and there asked God if he could have a prayer answered. And the resulting vision that he received caused him to say this, which is one of my favorite statements of Joseph Smith. He said, I knew it, and I knew that God knew it, and I could not deny it. You notice that he didn't say that he had faith in it, because he had now knowledge. In section 32, in the doc, or, or in the Alma chapter 32, about, about faith, it talks about that, uh, that faith is what you begin with. When you plant the seed, you plant the seed and you, and you see if it grows. Once the seed grows and you see it actually growing, then your faith becomes dormant because you know. So knowledge actually trumps faith, but you have to continue to have faith in other things because you only have knowledge in that one area. So, uh, so this, is what this, uh, this is what evidence is about, and this is why we are hoping to strengthen testimonies and show forth the evidences to the world about this. And so uh, in closing, uh, Elder Holland said this, May our Father in Heaven bless us and an ever larger cadre of young scholars around the church to do more and more to discover and delineate and declare the reasons for the hope that is in us, that like those converted Lamanites, we may with bold conviction hold up to a world that desperately needs it, the greatness of the evidences which we have received, especially of the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon, the keystone of our religion. And with that, he closed.